to, to, to that. But let me now come to this tragic incident yesterday where Sergeant Vaughn was shot and killed. And according to the police, let me read what the police release is saying this morning, a very brief uh, release. It says, Guyana Police Force is reporting that a police constable is under close arrest for killing for the killing of Sergeant Alex Vaughn. According to the police, and they quote in them here, based on preliminary inv information, he allegedly and unintentionally fatally wounded Sergeant Alex Vaughn on Tuesday, March 12, 2024. And then it goes on to say that Mr. Clifton Akin, who is performing the functions of Commissioner of Police, has since ordered a probe into the incident, which is currently ongoing by the Office of Professional Responsibility and supervised by the chairman of the Police Complaints Authority. I got the, but um, the, 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 there's no chairman of the Police Complaints Authority. There is a complaints authority. The law 1702 does not provide for any chairman. This is a misnomer. He is the, the person who's there now, Mr. William Ramlal, the retired judge. He is the police complaints authority. So my the journalist who wrote this, um, make the correction. I like when you write, we got to get these things accurate. We try to be accurate and we try to let you know. Sure, you don't know. But uh, for years, they were speaking about the chairman of the Police Complaints Authority, and it was discovered that there's no chairman of the Police Complaints Authority. There is the Police Complaints Authority, who currently is uh, retired Justice William Ramlal. So they're saying that this matter is to be investigated. But then they say, um, you know, let me let me read something here to what the, um, <clears throat> according to the, this is yesterday, according to the crime chief, Vaughn was one of the officers from a specialized joint services unit that was deployed in pursuit of prison escapee Wong. That is what it says. He was part of a specialized joint services unit. That is the, according to what was um, the crime chief was quoted. Now, let me say this. This thing hurts a lot because I knew Vaughn. When I was a commander at West Demerara, Vaughn was stationed at West Demerara at the time. Um, somebody sent me, I know, 5908 Vaughn. I, I, I think I have a thing about number. 5908 was his regulation number. And they're saying that this man was in, unintentionally, and um, he was allegedly unintentionally and fatally wounded by some constable. We need to, I know it's early. I, need, I understand it's early. An investigation has to be done. But I am hopeful that a proper investigation is done into this whole matter. How can this constable accidentally, well, unintentionally kill the sergeant? And people have reminded me of the incident on January 1, 2023, in Maikoni, where a constable shot and killed Corporal McPherson, I think his name, and a civilian man. And in that, um, at that time, the report was that the corporal was attempting to arrest a man who was resisting. And this constable who was on duty with the corporal uh, claimed that having seen this man resisting the corporal, he fired a few rounds in the direction. That is what he said. That is what was reported. He see his colleague on the next man's scuffling. And he fired a few rounds in the direction. I don't know what transpired causing um, Sergeant Vaughn to be killed, but I want to say this because I've said it before. The ranks were going around with firearms, private security, civilian licensed firearm holder, police ranks, even members of the military people walking, walking around this place in Guyana with firearms, all kinds. Rifles, uh, assault rifles, pistols, revolvers, shotguns. I am venturing to say that 99% of those persons are not properly trained to use the firearm. They don't know when you to use it. They don't know the mechanics. They can't shoot um, accurately. And you're taking take this from a person who was a senior firearm instructor in the Guyana Police Force for a number of years. The older police will know. I was a senior firearm instructor at the TSU. 
I am not only instructing people how to use firearm. I challenge up to now, I just challenge, well, I, I don't interact with them now. But a few years ago, I used to tell them, I dare any, I challenge anyone, and let me go in the range. Let's go in the range and test our skills. And they would tell you, as old as I am, God is telling you, oh, you're geriatric. They can't test me. So when I speak about firearms, I'm speaking from a position of knowledge and strength and authority. And I can't understand how a properly or adequately trained police rank can unintentionally shoot and kill the sergeant. First thing I would want to ask, what type of weapon he had? What type of firearm this constable was armed with? If it was a revolver, was it or was it a revolver? Was it a pistol? Was it an assault rifle? Was it a carbine? All these things we need to know. What type of firearm he was armed with? I asked the same question about the um, the, the incident in Maikoni on the 1st of January 2020. And up to now, we have not been provided with an answer. Up to now, we have not been provided with an answer. So I am saying that we have people running around the place with firearms, private security, police ranks, uh, civilians. They're just interested in getting this firearm as a status symbol, right? They don't know how to use the firearm. And when I say how to use, the mechanics of it, how to perhaps if it's a pistol or a, um, other type of weapon, how to strip, how to clean, how to assemble the weapon, how the weapon functions, what we used to call um, the mechanics of the weapon, how it functions. They don't know that, how to shoot it accurately, when to shoot it, Most, even more importantly, when to shoot it. And the rules are clear. We have discussed it repeatedly on the program, when you may shoot, when you are legally authorized to shoot. And I have never bought into this accidental, unintentional discharge. I have never bought into it because most of those firearms, most of those firearms require deliberate pressure on the trigger for it to go off. And even before that, even before that, you have to have, let's assume that it is a revolver. It carries a chamber. The, uh, the rungs are in the chamber. You have to put, you have to apply considerable pressure on the trigger for it to fire off. Even if the revolver is loading and it falls down, it's not going to go off um, like that until, unless something strikes the trigger. And then you have a trigger guard to protect that. If it's a pistol which carries a magazine, the magazine with rungs is in the pistol, is on the pistol. Unless, before it can be fired, you have to chamber a rung. A rung has to go in the chamber and the, tr the trigger has to be squeezed. So you have all of these safeguards. If it's a... <clears throat> And one of these assault rifles, same thing. And, in, and, and I should mention as well, if it's a pistol, uh, most of these pistols carry a safety catch. So it's not only the rung has to be in the breech, but the safety catch has to be deactivated. And then considerable pressure, five, six pounds of pressure, has to be applied on the trigger before this firearm goes off. Are you talking about unintentional and accidental? Unintentional and accidental? It is clear, this is his luck, without knowing, let me tell you this, without knowing the full circumstances of this incident, some amount of lack of training must be involved. I understand, based on the on what I just read, the rank is under close arrest. Well, I don't know if he can be lawfully placed under close arrest. The law, 1701, spells out the offense, the offenses for which a rank can be placed under close arrest. But I'm saying this when we talk about the investigation and the um, in this incident. If the rank, as I suspect, is not properly trained, you think is he alone is culpable? Do you think if the, the, the guy in the police force gives a firearm to a rank who is not adequately and properly trained and he ends up killing someone, as happened in this case, whether the force is not to be blamed as well? And this is where legal culpability comes in because I can tell you in other jurisdictions, the organization will be held um, liable, not only the constable who actually discharged the rum, but the organization that gave this firearm to this man who appears to have been untrained is also culpable. When I was a firearm instructor, I had to go into the witness box, I think on one or two or three occasions, I can't remember exactly, to give evidence. 
where ranks are discharged for arm, injuring, killing people. I have to go on the evidence to talk about the training, what training they had, and to show that they were properly trained to use this firearm. And therefore, that the, the fact that they fired it off can be no accident, cannot be any accident. And again, I want to emphasize before I bring in Mr. Conway, there's a clear lack of training, clear lack of training. And again, not only in the police force, not only in the police force, but people in general carrying firearms around in Guyana, they are not adequately trained, right? People just talk to somebody, pay some big money. As Mr. Conway know the locations, they pay some money, they get a firearm. Can't use it. Can't use it. Don't know when to use it. So when they are confronted with a the situation, they are a danger to themselves and others. They cannot use it. And that is an extremely, extremely dangerous thing which needs to be addressed and addressed urgently. So we have the, the Minister of Home Affairs, Ropes and Ben. These, the, the, the um, police comes under him. We have the man there who's an extended squatter. He was a drill instructor, and I think he was a firearm, a little firearm instructor, perhaps not a very good one, but he was a firearm instructor as well. And he ought to know. He ought to know. And, you know, again, I challenge them. These ranks are trained. When last this man had a refresher training to fire a, a firearm? Those things are non-existent in the police force. And when you talk about it, people believe you're attacking the force unnecessarily. When a recruit passes shoot training school and he does that, what we call familiarization shooting, he just, he just familiarize himself with the firearm. Many times they don't shoot again and they give him firearms to go on duty. We, in back in the day, we had annual annual um, shooting for me ram members of the force. I used to conduct that, annual. Officers and inspector, officers in particular, right at the TSU miniature range, the other ranks, the Mary range, to shoot and to make sure that the ranks are trained and kept abreast. When I attended the FBI Academy some time ago, you, you get these agents have to come in to the academy on a regular basis to recertify to re-certify, right? So let me understand that is not giving a person a firearm, and that's what happened in the force. If a person gets a private uh, a firearm to carry, his personal firearm, property of the force, but he's allowed to carry it. No recertification. No recertification. So you have to end up with this problem. But let me bring in Mr. Conway before I um say something more about it. Mr. Conway, your comments on this disturbing um, killing of the police. Paul, you know, uh, first let me express my condolences to the family, friends, relatives of Sam Vaughan. I don't well, and just like you, I know him. I know him when, when I was commando D division. And also he worked with me when I was commander F Division. Work a lot in the interior, a train bang on those border locations. Um, I read the, the, the release coming out of the police. It's very sketchy. And there are more questions than answers. Very sketchy report, you know. Where is it that a member of the force died on the tragic such circumstances and, and you're hearing but unintentional and accidental weapons don't kill nobody guns don't kill nobody it's people who kill people and and you mentioned paul training training is critical and only training retraining watch about two weeks ago i went to police headquarters to do some conduct some official business at the finance office. And there was a guy walking at the TSU gate. And I asked him, I said, when last you shoot a gun? And he couldn't tell me. He, in the first couple of years, and since his initial training, he didn't shoot that gun. You rightly mentioned, Paul, that we, we used to do yearly training. And then you persons who perform well you used to get money at the, at the end of the end of end of the year that they got to get pre refresher training. And I don't know how they select those persons from the specialized joint services unit. 
perhaps I don't I, I hope it's not they heard that the man is is, is at Carol and they just pick up some men and say let me go on an operation you know with, with, with the GDF I don't know were they proper briefing and when, when, you, when you look at it you know and then they're saying that the man is under close arrest close arrest deals with with on the offenses under the police discipline act this is a case this is a case of, of, of homicide not not under the police discipline act and if they want to know more more they, but, but, but rest, check section 10 of the police's act chapter 17 1701 you know and, and i don't know what briefing they had and they're talking about accidental discharge and unintentional this discharge now the, the guiding principle for for the use of firearms is force order number 23 of 69 that's when i was just public we published numerous times in the force order 23 of 69 it said when you may fire and and let me read it again one when you attack and you are praying serious danger to your person and are unable to defend yourself by any other means when property you are ordered to when property you are ordered to defend is attacked and you are unable to safeguard it by any other means three when attack is made to rescue persons in lawful custody four when anyone is found committing or about to commit felony burglary shop breaking house breaking arson larceny and does not desist after warning and cannot be deterred or arrested by any other means six to prevent a police station or police outpost from being overrun there's five sorry and six when so ordered by a superior rank i don't do like the last one unless in the union in a, in a right unit situation and this is the guiding principle and and in my days as a constable you you, you have to write down these these when you may fire the guiding principle in your pocketbook and anytime you 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 have lifted a weapon you have to read when you may fire to the support officer and there's an entry made in the in, in the station there he's saying for salon number 33 of 69 when you may fire read and explain to this to this rank and he said he understand the nature of the document and the person will sign that so they're putting you on the guard if you want to go and do nonsense so 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 be it and you know this thing about you got to be trained you got to be re re training and then many times when i see a man with a fire mark see when last i shoot a fire and then you hold here a whole set of different story it, it is sad that the that, that, that sergeant i don't think he had many more years to go has died under that under those circumstances those sketchy circumstances and then you hear about unintentional and, and accidental total nonsense I, I i hope that they do a proper investigation and they'll be guided by when you may fire that's the guiding principle anytime you shoot off a wrong you got to go to when you may fire and if any one of the six can't cover you well you, you you're in serious trouble and persons got to be constantly reminded anytime you uplift a firearm to go on duty you must be reminded firearms are designed to kill and, and if you do you don't you don't enforce that in people they'll be do a whole set of nonsense and lives will, will be lost um right and you're correct you know again i say as a um firearm instructor uh you spoke about the when you may fire and let me challenge the um senior ranks or the C, the hierarchy of the force including well of the force also the minister of home affairs also the national security advisor Yari Govaya, also the prime minister lion mark phillips who was the former chief of staff Go around the um the, the force, even Georgetown, go around the country randomly when you're driving around. Stop, you see a policeman with a firearm, ask him what are the rules of engagement when he can fire. Ask him. And before you do that, you might arm yourself with that um force order that Mr. Conway spoke about and see how many of them know when they can fire. And these are people who are going around with firearms, you know, when you when you may fire. I am willing to bet, I'm not a betting man, but I'm going to wager big that 99% of the persons you encounter and you ask them would not be able to recite to you. Not necessarily verbatim, but to explain to you those rules that Mr. Conway 
just um, read out there. They don't know, and that is because they lack training. And let me say this. When I was there at operations, sitting in the seat of Deputy Commissioner Operations, I, based on my background and based on what I saw, decided one day to go to the TSU to interact with the instructors. These were people who were instructing people on the use of firearm. And I was appalled by the responses I got. And I had to order and put them into class to make sure that they knew. Because if you don't know, you can't teach. You don't necessarily have to know to shoot, you know, because when I became a firearm instructor, I could tell you I couldn't demonstrate properly how to shoot, but I acquired that skill over the years, but I knew the rules to explain to them. And one of the first things you do, one of the first things you do when you start is to tell them the safety rules, the safety precautions. And one of the first, I always remember that, treat every firearm as if it were loaded until you personally have proven otherwise. Let me repeat that. That is the first safety rule that I used to teach. You treat every firearm, all the guns then, as if it were loaded until you personally have proven otherwise. I have gone to renew firearm um, license. I have gone, yes, um, Carlton, the now NSP, the normal safety precaution. I have gone to latch firearm from time to time. And I have to tell them, look, you don't do that. People walk into the place with a shotgun, um, a pump action shotgun, and the, the, the working portion is not to the rear. Wrong. The working portion must always be to the rear. If it's one of those single barrel, double barrel shotgun, it must be broken so that you can see inside. If it's a revolver, the cylinder must be out so that you can see it. If it's a pistol, the magazine must be out and the working portion, the slide must be to the rear. Those are normal safety precautions which where people are not taught. Normal safety precautions is that treat every firearm as if it were loaded until you personally have proven otherwise. Does somebody come and tell you, oh, this gun, this gun um, unloaded? No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way, friends. I want to tell you about shooting too. I have gone to many places abroad with the Guyana and the West Indies uh, rifle team. And you get to the stage where um, on the range, you even get what we call safety breach flags. And they're even stricter now in the UK. You go there for a competition. The bolt of the rifle, because we use bolt action rifles, has to be out of the rifle until you get into the fine position there. And then you're going to put that um, bolt in. So safety is very, very important. And the next thing that they need to know, the next thing they need to know, is to make, I'm sure they don't have records of people training, and that is also important. The more coming to the training school, you have to have individual records. When he trained, who trained him, what was he trained on? And that is one of the issues too. A man might go into the training school and he is trained with a pistol or a revolver, right? Maybe a, a, a um, SLR rifle. But once he goes out into the station, they assume that he trained to use all firearms or whatever firearm. They just give you a gun to go on duty. So then the man has never trained with that firearm. It is that serious. It is that serious. And we have uh, put things in place to deal with that because it's an expensive proposition. People got to go and shoot. You can't give people gun and they're not shooting and practicing regularly. Well, in this oil-rich country, that shouldn't be an issue. That should not be an issue. And yes, somebody pointed out here to one of the main safety precautions too. Apart from treating every firearm as if it were loaded until you personally have proven otherwise, that you always keep the muzzle or the mouth of the gun pointing in a safe direction. And I used to explain to them when I asked the question, Chris, what is a safe direction? And some people said to the front. I said, no, not always. Some people say up. No, not always. Some people said down. No, it's not always. Depending on where you are, depending on where you are, even in the range, towards the front is always a safe direction. Down the range is a safe direction. When we are doing training, you tell them, if you are at the bottom of a building, let's say, to say you're pointing it up, not necessarily safe because people might be up there and if it goes off, people can be injured. You're on a, you're not, you're on a hard surface, you point it down, it might ricochet. So you have to take these things into consideration. We always told them to, we taught them, to know your backstop. A teaching firearm for some of these policemen. No, your backstop. You know what is the backstop? Your backstop is where the bullet is likely to end up having missed the target 
or pass the target. The backstop. You got to know your backstop. So if a man running down the road and you get people in a crowd behind, that's your backstop. You can't just really, nearly fire it. Forget about these things you see with Clint Eastwood and these people in the picture. That, that, them things don't happen in real life. Them things don't happen in real life. People say, well, shoot the man and injure your foot. And, no, no, no. That, them things don't happen. That is picture story. Picture story. So, again, I'm very upset over this matter. And I, I say that we need a thorough investigation. Because remember, remember, they say that these people who are on this specialized unit looking for this escaped prisoner. So here we have a situation now where this prisoner escaped almost a month ago, when he escaped, sometime a long time ago. This man, uh, Wong, a convicted rapist serving 15 years. It was said that sometime last month, he was out in the fields early in the morning um, they are, uh, to do agriculture with some prison officer. He asked to go into the bush to decadicate. He went in there, and after fifteen min after five minutes, the prison officer did not see him emerging. He went to look for him and discovered that he had escaped. And we didn't hear anything more until last week, Friday, where we heard that this man is alleged to have chopped a mother and her son, killing them. The Saxakali, I think, that occurred, killing them. And again, what happened then? Nothing. Till yesterday, now you hear that he was a man on for this man. And this constable is alleged to have shot and killed the sergeant uh, accidentally. So one or 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 a or a or a um, system, a system which allowed for one man to escape. Either the system allowed him to escape, or the neglect of one or more prison officers allowed him to escape. Or we have now three people dead. Three people are dead because of whatever mistake would have been made allowing this man to escape. And therefore, I will hope. That when this investigation is done, all of that, you mean, yeah, you're going to investigate the death separately, but you have to have a more comprehensive in, um, investigation to determine how come this man escaped, what efforts were made to recapture him, and all of that. All of that. A lot of stuff going on under the Minister of Home Affairs, ropes and men, and he's quiet, like Kathy Titong, you don't hear about him any longer. You're not hearing about him, and the meanwhile, people are dying. And you're not hearing anything from the minister. When you hear anything from the extended squatter, there's a lot of bullcrap he speaks. Like when he's telling people last week that the major challenge to the force is cybercrime and social media influencers. That is what that man is telling people. When you have policemen who are not properly trained killing the others, it's not an isolated incident, remember. Again, I remind you that on the 4th of January last year, this, the couple, Mark Foster, was shot and killed by Coney by one of his colleagues. Shot and killed by one of his colleagues. And that is what we have. And there have, other, there have been other incidents. Um, luckily, they weren't um, fatal. But other incidents where police shoot um, and injured civilians and the, the, the colleagues in the force. So this thing requires a thorough investigation. And I'm waiting to see what the corporate propaganda unit uh, will see. Because I start off already by saying that the um, the acting commissioner has ordered uh, investigation by Office of Professional Responsibility. What well, Office of Professional Responsibility? This is a crime committed. This is a, this is a, this is a homicide. You should have your more senior detectives um, investigating this to find out what really transpired. And here you're talking about. Um, so let's look to see the type of cover up on the type of bullcrap they, 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 they will release. But I'm going to be on it. I'm going to be following it up to see what transpires. And then we had again, as we're talking about shooting, we had the incident where um, the security guard, security guard at Vidinuk shot and killed by, by, by bandits. That's just a few days ago. Security guard, let me see if I can pull it up. Well, before I do that, let me bring in Mr. Conway if he wants to see anything more on this incident which resulted in the escape of the prisoner and the death of Sergeant Vaughan. Mr. Conway? It, 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 it's shocking, you know. Here it is, according to the police report, the specialized unit of the Joint Services, a member of the specialized unit of the Joint Services, unintentionally and accidentally 
shot and killed a police sergeant. Huh? Imagine that. A member of the specialized joint service unit accidentally and unintentionally shot and killed. And as, as you mentioned, you know, training and retraining, there should be the, the order of the day. And they must just pick up people from Bartico police station or where say, well, hey, we, 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 we cite them on and carry away information. Let me go. Without no proper briefing. We don't know, no, 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 no proper briefing and no, nobody really in command and in, 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 in control of the situation. And, and it might be interesting to know when last that, that, that constable and son is constable use a gun or when he had training. And then if you may recall, they had some three month old police that Silal Passad push out. Some of them only use the, 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 the pistol and the revolver, the pistol revolver and the shotgun. So maybe he could, have, he could have been one of the three months old old police that that Sila Passad pushed up when he was commissioner of police, and he had training for the weapon that he used. You know, so so many unanswered questions. Paul, let's move on, though. Yeah, but this investigation we'll be talking about should encompass all of that. How, how much service this rank had? How much? Uh, what type of training he had with firearms? Where he trained with the very firearm that he used. Um, causing the death of all of that should be part of the investigation. So don't come and give it, a, give us any whitewash thing. Don't come to give us any whitewash thing. And as I said, we 